Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Photo Biz Live. This is Danny and John Kay joining in from the Photo Biz team, and we're really excited to present today's webinar to everybody. And I wanted to thank all the different attendees from joining in. We see a bunch of you guys out there, so we're really happy to see everyone who's tuned in today. Today, you guys are going to have the opportunity to learn from John Kay, who's actually one of our uh, support team leaders. He's our senior leader here been with the company for almost five years now and I've had an opportunity to work with him um, on the support team in different departments and you guys may have had a chance to meet him at different trade shows that we attend. So John is going to be teaching you guys about different ways to drive traffic to your photo biz website. So again we're really excited to share today's information with you guys. If you do have any questions, which we hope you do, you can submit them at the end of the webinar using the chat tool and they're going to be answered at the end of the presentation. You can also join in the discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag PoundPhotoBizLive. So if you are tweeting, we'll do our best to answer any of those questions with that hashtag. If at any point during today's webinar you have any kind of difficulty hearing John or myself or seeing the visual slides, please use the comment box to let us know and we'll do our best to troubleshoot for you. We also are going to be recording today's webinar and it's going to be available for replay on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash photobiz. So when you're there, be sure to click on the subscribe button to receive the latest updates from our channel. All right, guys, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to John. Hello, everybody, and thank you for attending my PhotoBiz Live presentation today. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to go over some best practices and some great ideas to increase uh, traffic to your website. Um, and just so you have a little bit of background on who I am, um, I'm John Kay, and I am the senior team leader at PhotoBiz.com for the Passionate Support Team. Um, I know a lot of you work very closely with our passionate web consultants, and uh, we always love to hear from you. And, you know, we're really, really excited to get this webinar out here, so let's jump right into this thing. Uh, the first slide that you see here are just some of the topics that we're going to talk about today. Uh, the first one being, you know, how to participate in social media, how to get out there and build relationships and network with, with people, uh, website layout, some search engine optimization, and then engaging content. Uh, so the first portion that we're going to talk about is how to get social. And engaging people in social media can be a challenge. There's so many things out there on the different social networks, and there's so many distractions that, you know, a lot of times you find yourself kind of in a bit of a, in a, bit of a pickle trying to figure out how to begin the process. So the first part of any sort of social media is going to be building your fan base and, you know, getting a base of followers. For many of the clients that I work with, there's already a decent amount of social media presence that they have. However, everyone can do always do more. You know, even when it comes to photo biz, we work very hard to continue to grow our base of followers by doing things like the webinars and you know all the engaging content that we put out there. Uh, but taking a look at a little bit closer, you know, the first thing that I always recommend after you've you know you've established that you want to build a base of followers is that you want to make sure that you're making your website the hub of your online presence. And what I mean by that is rather than saying to people, well, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Twitter, you can find me on Instagram, and all these different places that are out there, just tell people to visit your website. And it's important that you take a close look at your photo biz website. As you're looking at it, we offer so many different solutions that you can use on your site to actually make sure that people can easily access your different social networks. Uh, we offer things like the social media icon bank. Uh, there's also the ability to embed widgets that are provided for you by the social, different social networks. One of, the, one of my personal favorite ones is the Facebook like box. You can embed that onto your website so that visitors to your website can click on it. They can like your page so that your updates will show up in their news feeds. But more importantly, they never leave your website. So you're not competing against all these other companies that are out there. They click like on that. They can see your updates. And then the next time that they log into their Facebook account, you know, you're going to have your updates mixed in with everything else that's out there. So it's a tremendous way to go in and build your fan base without having to do any sort of extra work. That's something that's included right in your account. The other side of that is that you can always work directly with our support team in that. If you're having trouble in figuring out how to do any sort of the social networking and embedding it into your site, bringing it over, you can call our passionate support team. The phone number is right at the bottom of the screen on the slide there. 
Uh, and we also even offer a paid service, a social media boot camp with Danny. And he actually will go in and set up any pages that you might not have yet, educate, educate you on best practices for social media engagement. And that will ensure that you, know, you have the best that you possibly can have. Um, other great ways that you can use your social media once you've got everything put into place is you can actually get in there and you know participate in discussions, comment on things, offer up your knowledge, offer help to people online. It's a great way to show, one, that you're very knowledgeable about photography and that people can benefit from following you online. Uh, you know, that's a tremendous way to show that you are a very, uh, a very knowledgeable photographer. Um, and I go into offering your knowledge and experience in other ways a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can use that. And it really, with there's being so many different levels of skill when it comes to photography, there's so much content that you can provide for people because whether you're someone that's only been in the industry for a couple of years or you're someone that's been in the industry for many, many years, you still have a set of skills that somebody out there may not know about or somebody else does not have and they can learn from you. Uh, the other thing that I like to talk about when it comes to social media is something that gets overlooked, I think, a lot, um, and that's using online testimonials. And what I mean by that are things like Google+, and I say Google+, only because that's what uses, uh, what Google uses for their local listings now. Uh, it's been Google Local and Google Places over the years. It's been called many different things, but Google+, Plus is what's tied into your Google Local searches. Uh, the other popular review site that's out there is Yelp. And, you know, a, one way that you can kind of be proactive and making sure that the reviews that are out there are reflective upon your business, create some sort of small incentive for people to leave you a positive, a positive testimonial on those places. Uh, you know, even if it's something as small as saying you get a free print, but just for leaving a positive review on Google+, it helps you gain more of a presence that's out there. A good example that I like to point out, it's not necessarily a photographer, but there's a local business here in Greensboro that inside their store they have a small kiosk that you can go onto, post a positive review to the Google Plus page for them, and they give you a 10% discount on your purchase that day. It's a great way, especially if you're someone that doesn't have a lot of reviews out there, you can get out there and start building up those reviews and it takes very little effort on your own side. So the next part that I'd like to cover is linking. When it comes to your social media, make sure that you have a clickable link to your website from anywhere that you have out on the web. And that can range from forums to, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. It, it really doesn't matter. Email signatures. Literally anywhere that you are online, you should have a clickable link back to your website. Uh, on the slide here, I have an example of what the email signature for any email that I send out to a PhotoViz client has. And you'll see that I have our Facebook page linked, our Twitter page linked, our blog linked, and the PhotoViz community linked. And that ensures that anybody that gets an email from me, there's a clickable link there. And as you go through the different, the different social networks that PhotoViz.com has, there's a clickable link back to our corporate website where you can get all the information that you need from us. You can log into your account. Um, it seems very simple, but it's something that you would never believe how many clients I talk to that don't have that. And it's something that it takes, you have to do it once and it's done. Um, and you know, the big thing there is to do a self inventory and go through all of your different social networks and make sure that you have that clickable link in there. It's really critical for your branding so that people can find you. It's never a mystery about where your portfolio is or what pages you have out there. Uh, and the last part that I, talk about. <clears throat> it's one of those bug, buzzwords. It's your blog. And if you're using a blog, it's important to make sure that it's mapped specifically to your domain. Whether it's blog.yourdomain.com or yourdomain.com slash blog, it makes no difference to the search engines in terms of you know how, they, how that impacts your search engine optimization, but it's important for your branding. And the reason I say that is because as you post blog articles to your Facebook page or your Twitter page, it's important that that domain is in there so that people recognize your branding and in turn that's going to reflect on more clicks into your website. Make sure that it's a subdomain of your site or sub subdirectory. It just depends on you know who your blog provider is and you know what type of blog setup that you have. But as I mentioned, it makes absolutely no difference in terms of how you have that address configured for the way that the search engines look upon it. 
Uh, and if you're not sure about how to do that, don't hesitate to call our, our passionate support team. We'll help you out with that. It looks so much better than seeing someone that has a Tumblr blog that doesn't have it mapped, or a WordPress blog that doesn't have it mapped, or a blogger blog. It looks so good for your brand. So the next section that we talk about is getting out there and building relationships and networking with people. This is one of my personal favorite things to do. The picture I have on the slide is me working with a client at uh, the WPPI trade show that was in Las Vegas this year. And I love people. That's my favorite thing about my job is working with our clients every day to make sure that they have a great looking website. And there are so many great ways to use your network to your advantage when it comes to getting clicks on your website. So many people out there are searching for blog articles, site content, whether it's clients, vendors, photography groups and organizations you're part of, charities you might work with, venues that, you, that you're frequently booked for, even local publications. Uh, there's a lot of places most people don't even think about the potential of getting good referral traffic to their site from. Uh, a good example that I like to use, I mentioned, was charities. And you know, you can offer just a little bit of your time to take some photos for a charity that you work with and then have them use your photos on their site in exchange for a link back to your site and your name, you know, photo credit. It's an excellent way to give back to a local charity that you might work with, but more importantly, it gives you great exposure in a very, very positive way as your photography is going to be showcased in an article or a blog post about, you know, the particular subject that you shot for. Uh, it makes you feel good. It makes you look good. And there's, there's absolutely no drawback to doing that. Another good example is when it comes to venues. Um, you know, as a photographer, there's probably a number of venues that you frequently get booked to shoot at. Um, and if you're shooting weddings or if you're shooting portraits in, in a park or, a, you know, a particular place a lot, make a connection there. Find out who maintains their social media or website. Find out who handles booking the location. You know, that's where you build that relationship. And as you see people over and over again, Ask them if they'd be willing to put a link on their website to yours or if you can leave marketing materials there that has your website on it. It's a great way to get in there and you end up with a great connection either with a link back to your site from a place that's going to refer potential clients to you or you can have a great conversation, make a connection with somebody who has the power that they recommend you to people that come to them to book for their event. It's, it's easy to do, and it's, all it requires is a handshake and a smile. You know, you get a little conversation going, and that conversation goes so many places. Um, and I mentioned also industry vendors. Um, a good example here that I like to use, and you can really use this example for any, any sort of vendor that you work with. Let's say you're a wedding photographer, and there's a, a local makeup artist that's really popular in your area. Reach out to them. Offer to write an article for them about their website, or for their website about how important it is for a bride to use a professional uh, makeup artist for her big day. And you know, use a few images out of your portfolio in the article to show off your work with a credit and a link back to your site. This benefits both you and the person that you're working with because many of the people that are visiting the site are going to be the same potential clients that you're both going after. Um, but you're not in the same line of field. You're not competitors. So it's a great, great way. And like I said, that works with anything, it, whether it's a caterer, whether it's a florist. It really doesn't matter. Any sort of vendor that's out there, you can write a very similar article just about how important you know, using that particular place is. And you know, it's something that engages, it engages potential clients. Um, and then you know, the last part regarding you know, the photography aspect of it is there's so many people out there that need work done for them. You know, they need they need some sort of professional photography. And you know, with with a lot of the small business websites that you look at out there, um, even just for your own personal use, you'll notice that people's photography out there needs a lot of help. You know, as far as these small businesses go, reach out to them and you know, and let them know, hey, how about you guys? We we work out something where I can shoot a couple pictures for you, and you know. You can generate some buzz about you know how much you've benefited from that photography. You know that's the big thing. Get that buzz out there about your business, and clicks really do start just coming rolling in. And as far as blog articles go, and and guest blogging, um, a great live example of this is to look at the PhotoBiz blog. Um, you know we have photographers who you know contribute articles to our blog for all types of topics, and in exchange for that, we feature them with a link back to their live website. Well, we're not you know, a photography company, we cater to photographers, and we appreciate the many talents that our clients have out there, and we absolutely love to showcase that on our blog. Um, 
keep in mind, like I mentioned before, that there are so many levels of skill out there that something that you consider to be very basic, there's many people out there that it just blows their mind that you know how to do it. Um, it's, it's kind of the example that we use in passionate support where we'll talk to a client that says, well, I'm just not good at websites. And we recognize that talents lie in different places and where, you know, you may not be able to build this tremendous website on your own. If you handed most of us your camera, we probably wouldn't even be able to turn it on. So, you know, there's, it's, it's really important that you can keep in mind that even a basic skill that you have, that you can throw it out there on a blog article for somebody and somebody out there is really going to benefit from you and it's going to engage them. They're going to want to click on your website to see what else you have out there. So that's, you know, that's a great type of relationship that you build and that's more content that's going to get indexed out there. The more content that you have and the more things that refer traffic back to your site, the better it's going to look for you. The next section that I want to talk about is something that's, that's really, really important and it's something that um, it's easy to get caught up in, but it's also important that you that you take advantage of us when it comes to this, and that's site layout. Um, you know, when it comes to your site layout, one portion of Google's algorithm that a lot of people overlook when it comes to, you know, getting a good index with the search engines and being out there so that people can easily find you through a search engine search is to make sure that your site is user-friendly. Uh, the example that, that I'm using today is for Hiram Trio, and his website is HiramTrio.com, and I have that on the screen here. Um, Hiram's site is really simple to navigate. You know, he has a very, very simple navigation menu, and I'm going to actually click forward a slide so you can see what I mean. Um, on his site, you know, he's got seven total different options that you can click on. So when clients come to his site or visitors come to his website, it's very easy for them to find what they're looking for. They don't get overwhelmed by too many different options. And as you keep those, those navigation options limited, you also want to make sure that the, the actual titles themselves are short, clear, and concise. Try to stay, like I mentioned, at a maximum of seven navigation menu items so that the visitor just doesn't get overwhelmed when they come to it. Uh, other things that you want to do is make sure that when you're going in and you're optimizing your site, make sure that if you have things that are a single item in a drop-down menu in a photo biz site, move that directly out of the navigation menu. You know, that way it's one less click for people. They don't have to jump through any hoops or, you know, there's not a ton of clicks to find the information that they're looking for. Uh, that's something that can really help you in terms of getting a better index with Google. If you do a Google search for international wedding photographer, You'll find that Hiram comes up on page one, and there's you know there's a lot that goes into it, but site layout is one of the things that's very very important. I'm actually going to backpedal to the previous slide and you know mention a couple other things when it comes to your website. Uh, one thing is make sure that your website's up to date. One of the most common things I see, and one of the most easily overlooked things that's out there, is making sure that any copyright information you're using has the current year in it. It lets people know you're still in business. Uh, keep your portfolio up to date. With PhotoBiz, it's really easy to update your site. You can log in anytime, 24 hours a day, update your site, publish it, and it's it's there. Um, you know, make sure, like I mentioned, the drop-down menu thing. Make make it easy. Less clicks is better. The more clicks people have to do to get around your site, the less likely they are to see whatever content that you have in there. And then last but certainly not least, don't forget about us, your friendly PhotoBiz web consultants. Our passionate support team will help you personalize your brand. We'll make sure that your site looks great. Don't ever hesitate to call us, whether it's a, what you seem as a huge question or as, as, as a really tiny question, it doesn't matter to us. We're going to make sure that your site looks awesome. And when you call us, we're also going to look to make sure that your site has everything that it needs. If we notice that something's on your site, isn't configured as good as it could be, or it's missing something, we'll mention it to you. And it's it's much better that you know the two, that we work it out with you before a client calls you and says that you know hey this page isn't working right, or I can't find this other information on your site. It makes it makes sure that your site is the most professional look that it possibly can. The other side of that too is if you're new to PhotoBiz or you just don't have time to go in and you know give your site the design look that it really needs, we do offer a we build it for you service where our customer comfort or charity will work with you. She's on our design team, and she'll build a fantastic-looking site just for you. And like I said, that's specifically offered to clients who may not have the time to dedicate and make you know actually get in there and build the site. So 
let's go on to the next section here, uh, which goes over some basic search engine optimization things. And I, I want to I want to start this and say, you know, when it comes to search engine optimization, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of a lot of people that used to know it works, but don't anymore. Search engine optimization changes every day. So it's important that you work with your PhotoBiz web consultants when it comes to SEO. Um, we offer, you know, that's included with your service. We offer SEO consultants, and we'll make sure that your site's set up the right way. We'll teach you how to do it the right way. Um, but the most important thing is to say that metadata has very little to no impact on where your website's going to actually index with search engines. Uh, it used to be that that was the biggest thing for it, now it's the, it's the least important thing for your site. It's more about content. But it is important that you have your site properly configured for search engines to be able to crawl it and get it indexed and get it climbing as more and more clicks start coming into your website. Um, you know, make sure that each one of the pages in your PhotoBiz account has a unique page title, a page description, and a page keyword. Like I mentioned, it doesn't help you in terms of where your site gets indexed, but it helps you get categorized so people can start finding you. Uh, most, most importantly, when you're writing the copy for your website, make sure that you include key information. Make sure you include who you are, what type of photography you offer, where you offer it, and how to contact you. I look at so many sites that have all this great photography on it, and then when it comes down to finding out who the photographer is, there's no contact information. And you know that's that's really bad because if someone comes to your site and they're blown away by your work and then they can't reach out to you to you know inquire about your services, it's not doing you any sort of good. Um, it's an absolute must to make sure that it's in there. And readable content on your site is the best thing that you can provide for the search engines because that's something that makes sure that everything on your account and everything on your website relates back to those important things. Make sure that people can find you. And then. The next part of that is making sure that you're taking advantage of the tools that are out there. Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools. It's completely free. You can set it up. We can help you out and set it up. Our sites are completely compatible with them. Um, you can submit a sitemap that we automatically generate for you so that each one of your pages is shown to Google's crawler. And then in turn, you can actually monitor and track the results of any marketing and any sort of you know, drives you do to draw traffic to your website. And, and as I mentioned in the beginning, keep in mind that we're here to help you out. We offer SEO consult, uh, consults where we'll go over best practices with you. We'll educate you on how to do it. Uh, you don't have to pay anything extra for, for that education. Uh, when we do also have you know, a paid service where we'll go in and do it for you. And we have a Google certified SEO expert on staff, Andy R. He'll optimize your site for you for maximum search engine performance. Um, and I've included our contact number. If you have any questions about any of those things, like I mentioned, do not hesitate to call us. We love to talk to you guys about your websites. Moving forward, content. This is a great, great thing. And I, I love to talk about site content because there's so many different things that people can do that's unique and it's simple and it drives people to your site. It, the results are there. Um, but the thing is, you hear that talk a lot. What, how, what's relevant content? Uh, but there's not a lot of information about out there about what is actually considered relevant. Uh, there's many, many ways to make your portfolio of images work for you. One big thing that I always mention to clients that I speak with and work with on their website is how to use the clients who hire you to market you. Uh, we have mini sites, which is a product that's really great. You know, Jack and Jill can hire you to shoot their wedding, and you include a personal wedding website for them in, in their you know in their wedding package. That's one aspect. Uh, that's hands off for you. You don't have to build it. They can build it for for themselves, but they're going to share that link out on their web, out on their social networks, and it's going to be jackandjill.yourdomain.com. It's a subdomain for you. People are going to go to that. It's a great way to get your name out there. Uh, but more importantly, what I like to mention is having a featured client of the month. Uh, much in the way that we do a featured photographer of the month at PhotoBiz, you could do a featured client for yourself. And what you can do there, it doesn't really matter what product you're using with us, whether you're using a PhotoBiz portfolio site, a PhotoBiz content site, a PhotoBiz blog, any, any product that you have with us. Have an uploaded gallery for that specific client. Reach out to them. Let them know, hey, I'm gonna, I would love to make you guys my featured clients this month. And you know they're going to generally react and say, yeah, that sounds great. I'm happy to do that. And what you do is once you've uploaded you know, that gallery onto your site, whether it's 
a website or if you put a blog article up about them, there's going to be an automatic page that's generated for that particular gallery. Send your clients that link. And what that does is it's going to create a small section on your website. And once you publish it and it's online, they have that link. Now suddenly your website's being linked out on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other social networks. And suddenly, you know, the let's say it was a wedding, you know, 50 to 100 people that were at the wedding, all of a sudden they've shared that on their Facebook page and that's grown to, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people that have seen your, your work, but more importantly, your website because it's a link back to the site. It's a wonderful way to tie in your site to the other things that I mentioned previously too in terms of creating content. Um, you know, write a blog about vendors that you love, favorite locations to shoot, you know, products that you prefer to use. All these things are great because it generates real interest in what you're doing and it's not just, it's not just going to be blog post after blog post of, of tons of images. It actually generates, you know, actual content that people can read over and in turn that's searchable content. It's more keyword and more actual readable content that people can find when they're doing that Google search for you. It's a wonderful way to grow your fan base and engage people. Another thing that you'll want to be sure when it comes to your site, make sure that your site is accessible on all platforms. Um, many, many longtime photo biz clients have just a Flash website. And that's fine, that's great. The only problem is that Flash only sites are not viewable on mobile devices. There's no mobile Flash out there. Um, that's why we offer the HTML mirror and we also have the HTML5 sites. Either one of those products makes your site 100% visible on any device that can view the web. That's absolutely key. Uh, looking at Google Analytics reports, it'll show you how many of your how many people that click on your site are on a mobile device. It might be a great time to take a look at that. And if you have a site that's flash only, make sure that you, you know you take a look at that and see how much traffic's coming to your site that's on a mobile device because it'll tell you and you'll see people that came to your site and weren't able to actually view it because it was a Flash only website. Flash is still, I think, the best way to dynamically showcase your work, but that mobile, that mobile liability there, you know, make sure that you add the HTML mirror. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful way and it's really affordable. It doesn't impact your monthly plan and with many of our long-term clients, you have the loyalty discount built in. So definitely take a look at that. And like always, if you have questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. Other site content that's very important Testimonials. I mentioned earlier in the webinar about the importance of online testimonials with places such as Google Plus or Yelp. Um, I'm actually referring to testimonials within your website on, when it comes to this. This is a great way to showcase what people have said about you in a way that you have full control over how it's presented. Um, you can customize it. You can put things like a picture of the client that gave you the testimonial if you choose to. You could even link out if you wanted to. Uh, but it's important to have client testimonials on the site so that when people do come to your website, they can see these great things that people have had to say about their experience with you as the photographer. Um, Google Plus and Yelp, like I said, those are great for you in terms of, of helping out with search engine, but on-page testimonials are great. Um, I mentioned Hiram's site earlier. He has a great testimonials page. If you go to photobiz.com, we have a testimonials page. In fact, with our testimonial program, that's something where those testimonials have come directly from great experiences with our support team. Um, we build, we, we have that page built to show off, hey, when we say we're passionate about support and we care about our clients, this is what our clients say about that extra mile that we've gone for them. We even include a link out to your website. Uh, so if, if you've had a great experience with the PhotoBiz support team or with PhotoBiz in general, if your business has benefited from it, you know, don't hesitate to drop us a line and send us a testimonial. We'll put a link out to your website on there. And like I said, that's something that we do that for any client that has great things to say about us. It's something that, you know, it shows that you're a reputable business. Um, but testimonials ultimately come and are earned by, you know, ensuring that your clients are happy with the end results. Uh, it shows that you're a great reputable business person and a great professional. So wrapping up the webinar here, let's go over a recap before we start the question and answer session with me and Danny. Um, we talked about today just tips for increasing visitors um, and the big thing was participating in social media, building relationships and networking with people out there, website layout, search engine optimization and creating engaging content. So that will lead us into the 
question and answer session uh, for the end of the webinar here. And I'm going to turn it back over to Danny briefly. All right, so I see a few questions have come in so far. So now is the time again to ask your questions. If you want to go ahead and just use the chat tool, you can leave us a comment, feedback, or any kind of question here. So our first question is from Lena Tavares. And the question is, is that what many sites are used for? And that's what many sites were designed for. Um, I've seen many, many creative ways of using many sites. Uh, I've seen a lot of clients that have used it for all different kinds of things. I, I could say that the photo biz client base is very, very creative, and I'm never, I'm never not amazed by the things that that clients come up with. But a wonderful way to use them, and what we actually designed them for, was specifically for events, uh, because it's online for a limited amount of time. You know, you control how long the actual site is viewable for. And in turn, you know, it's brand free from PhotoBiz, so it only it looks like something that's exclusive to you. Um, it's something where you can go in, make sure that it looks good. You know, you know, you can help your clients out with it. Your clients could even, if you wanted to, you could refer them over to us. But the the design was made, you know, specifically for events. Uh, as far as proofing goes, I see you submitted that second question there, Lena. Um, not necessarily because it's designed to be a mini event website, and the um, the site would you know for proofing I recommend using the actual client proofing tool or the PhotoBiz e-commerce solution either or whichever one makes the most sense for your business type um, the 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 mini sites would not serve as a good proofing tool simply because the the functionality isn't there to allow for favorites and comments on the actual proofing itself um, but the client proofing tool that we do offer you know it's it's flash based for PC and and Mac viewers. And in turn, it's also mobile friendly for iPad and Android users as well. We have a we have a free app that they can download to do their client proofing on those mobile tablets. That's a really really great question. The next question is from Suzanne Feinberg, and the question was, can you help us with domain setup if you use Blogger or WordPress to attach it to our PhotoBiz domain? And the answer is yes. Uh, Blogger itself it offers domain mapping for free. Um, and our passionate support team is more than happy to help you out with that. WordPress is a little bit different in that it depends on the type of blog that you have set up. Um, they do charge to do domain mapping. I think it's like $12 a year. Um, I'd, I'd have to check up to get the actual price for it. But um, that's something that we can also do. We just use an A record or a C name. And I'll have, I'll actually open a ticket up for you, Suzanne, and I'll have the passionate support team reach out to you. To, uh, to take a look at that and make sure that uh, you're all set up as far as your blog goes. That's, a, that's an excellent question. All right, and I'm actually going to answer this next question from Monica. Monica asks, what is a good way to feature a couple of images on Facebook of graduate sessions without sounding contrived? Um, Monica, there's definitely a couple of different ways to do that. If you wanted to send them over to your website, you could, ha you know, there's different ways to approach what your end result is. Do you want to drive more people to Facebook or do you want to drive people directly to your website? And, and in this case, I'm going to assume that you're wanting to get them over to your website just because of today's topic. So, you know, you can actually send the link to the client and have them do a little bit of the work for you and have them share it on their social media um, outlets that you can feature them actually on the website, maybe do a featured gallery on the website. That's always a great idea. I always uh, like when I see featured client or a featured session on different uh, photographers' websites, and then you know the photographer updates that re uh, every month or so. So you could put the client in that area, just make a new gallery, and then you could send them the link to your website, and they can tell their friends, "Oh yeah, I'm featured on my photographer's website. It's awesome. Check it out," and have them send the link to your website. So that's another idea to do that to get them, you know, driven directly to your website. If you're worried about um, you know, that being the case on Facebook, just think about the approach and what kind of incentive you're giving your followers with those photos. Are you giving them a sneak peek? Are you asking them to do something with that um, you know, to get more photos from that sneak peek? Where, you know, think about what your end result is, and that should help you figure out the best path to actually approach um, for featuring those images. Our next question is from Irv. And his question is, what do you think of programs sponsored by Yelp where you pay on a monthly basis for the number of clicks you receive? Isn't it easy for Yelp to game that, i.e. manufacture clicks that really have no chance in resulting in sales? Um, I would say any service that is 
out there that they're offering that you have to pay for clicks outside of paying you know Google AdWords I'd be really hesitant to do it um, because if you have a good business model and you provide an excellent service people are gonna leave you reviews you know your work speaks for itself so to say and I think that you know a program if you're paying for it I, I really don't I, I agree with you that you know it seems like it's something where a company could easily game that you know assuming if you know assuming that it's if it's a legitimate service I, I don't know that you know that that would necessarily be accurate but um, any any service that's out there that you have to pay for clicks or you have to pay for results in terms of you know overall indexing I, I don't necessarily think that that's good I, I can say that uh, you know I'm not familiar specifically with the program that Yelp is is offering but you know unless you're you're really really trying to get a rank somewhere I, I don't think it's necessary to pay for any sort of uh, any sort of clicks our next question is from Samantha and her question is I would like to know how to embed the Facebook like box to my photo biz website is this something that you can walk me through now I'm also planning on calling the support team later this week and and what I'll say Samantha I will actually go in and I will um, I'll send you an email after the webinar concludes today so that it'll give you the step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. If you go to the PhotoBiz blog, I actually wrote an article called "Big Changes or uh, Little Changes, Big Results," and it, one of the things that I talk about in that article is how to embed the Facebook like box on there. Uh, but I will follow up with you and make sure that you're all set. In regards to the second question that you asked there regarding current year and the copyright information, uh, depending on what products you're using, that will be located in the um, in the footer text section. And uh, I'll send you, like I said, I'll send you an email that covers that as well. We'll make sure that you get all taken care of. Our next question is from Helen Kraft, and her question was regarding changing the website to include social media icons on the home page as well as changing your template and helping you out with Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I will have one of our support team agents reach out to you as well, and we'll make sure that you're taken care of, Helen. We do offer paid services where we'll do it for you, but I think that you'd be able to get by with us just teaching you how as well. Uh, but I'll, I'll follow up with you and make sure that the support team takes care of you, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what you need in terms of going in and getting, uh, getting you all set up so that everything's on your site ready to go. That's, a, that's an excellent question. All right, Samantha, you have another excellent question, and I'm going to answer this one. Um, Samantha's question is, what is the general consensus in the industry of putting images on Facebook with or without your logo? Am I old school? I still feel like everything I put out there needs to be marked, but I see a ton of other photographers posting to places like Facebook all the time um, without the logo. Now, um, Smith, I'm going to give you a couple of pieces of advice on this. You know, first off, the decision at the end of the day, really, it, it will just boil down to your personal preference. I don't think there's a right or wrong um, answer because it really depends on what kind of content and photos you're sharing. You know, as a rule of thumb, um, I would recommend if you're going to be posting photos that your clients haven't purchased yet, I would um, watermark them. Now, you don't need to do some you know, traditional large copyright symbol in the middle of the photo, maybe put your watermark somewhere in, um, you know, that's not too noticeable, that's not too distracting, that would be a good idea. And and my second piece of advice is, you know, consult with um, your fellow photographers. You know, PhotoBiz has a great community of photographers that are on our fan page on Facebook, so you can leave a question there and just say, hey, you know, asking other photographers for your advice and see what you get. Um, you know, if you attend any local PPA or trade shows or conventions, usually you can get good advice from your fellow photographers. But like I said, it really just depends on what kind of content you're sharing. And again, if, you, if they haven't paid for it, then, you know, I, I definitely recommend keeping some kind of um, logo on there. Our next question is from Joan. And her question is, how important is it for your website to have your name as part of the company name? Does it send a different message if you use your name as the company name for the photography business? Um, I don't necessarily think that it matters that your name is in is in your studio. It's really all about branding and then making sure that your brand is consistent across all the different presences that you have online. Um, it's important to have your name on your website in terms of contact information so that people know the photographer that they're reaching out to. Um, if you think about it in terms of a business, if you looked up a service provider and you know whether it was an electrician or 
you know, a landscaping place or a painter or any, any other service that's out there, if you looked at a website and you couldn't find a contact name for who to actually contact to hire them, chances are you're not going to want to reach out to them. It doesn't have any sort of personal feel to it. Um, Photography is even more so important for that because you're capturing people's, you know, images. This is something that these images are going to be, you know, a family heirloom someday. And, you know, photography is such a personal thing for people that it's really important that you have some sort of contact information on there that includes your name, um, not necessarily in your domain name, you know, mark, but market your studio and your business so that, you know, it's consistent across every single platform that you have out there. That's, that's a really great question, Joan. Our next question is from Nicole, and she forgot and logged in a little bit late. And yes, uh, this will be rerun and it, uh, well posted to YouTube. We are recording it, so this will be posted to YouTube. Uh, once we get that up, uh, it'll be at youtube.com slash photobiz, and you'll be able to view this uh, at your leisure. So that's a, that's a great question. Our next question is from Casey, and her question is, I feel like my splash page is somewhat bland. Can I do anything to fix this? Uh, absolutely. I will have one of our passionate support team members give you a call, and they'll help you out with, with getting that splash page in working order. Great question. Our next question is from Helen, and her question is, do you have a lot of interior designers that use your site? And if yes, is there a sharing mechanism for designers? Uh, there are many different business types that use PhotoBiz. Uh, you know, while we do cater to primarily photographers with our portfolio websites, our HTML5 content sites can literally be used by any industry that's out there. Uh, I will have one of our team members give you uh, an email or give you a call, whichever is more convenient for you, and make sure that uh, we'll send you some examples of some other interior designers that are using PhotoBiz. That's, that's not a problem at all. Okay, so we have time for, for one more question, and this one's from Samantha. And her question is regarding uh, Google Plus or Yelp. Uh, which one should you recommend for online testimonials, and does it matter which one you encourage people to go on? Uh, I generally recommend Google Plus because that's what controls Google's local search rankings, um, and those are the you know the local map listings that you see when you do a Google search. Uh, you know, Yelp is there; it's great, but I think that Google Plus definitely weighs heavily and and much more towards the Google indexing. Uh, Google Plus. You know, it's something where you have to set up a page for it, and there's. I actually do get a number of questions in terms of how that, how that impacts your local search, and anybody that we didn't get to today on the QA session, we'll have our support team reach out to you for that. But, like I said, I'd recommend Google Plus over for over any other online port review out there because it's going to be something that's the most popular one, and it helps your website out the most. You know, Google, it's so much bigger than the other search engines that are out there. It's much, much more helpful for you to do it there, and you know that's where the large portion of the referrals for your business are going to come from. That's an excellent question. So I'm going to turn the mic back over to Danny, and he'll wrap everything up and go over any other uh, information that he has regarding our webinar series. It's been a great talking to everybody today, and thank you so much for attending. All right, and, and like John also mentioned, thank you guys for tuning in today, and thank you for the great questions. So I wanted to um, let everybody know again that the webinar will be online on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash photobiz. We get that question quite a bit. So yes, the recording is going to be online if you want to check it out or you joined us a little bit late today. And we want you guys to make sure you check out our blog where you can take a look at the up and coming webinars that we'll be posting and generally they are on Tuesday at 2 p.m. So we look forward to seeing you guys in future webinars and thank you again for attending this episode of PhotoBiz Live. Have a great day everybody.